Good morning, gang. Happy Wednesday morning. So who's going to save this country? Well, it ain't going to be one person. Okay? And as much as y'all know that I want to see Joe and the Ho thrown out, uh, I certainly want to see Trump elected. But Trump is not going to be able to save this country. We are so far gone, it's unbelievable. I mean, if you think about it, we're $34 trillion in debt. We've been invaded by basically every country in the world. Okay, Crime is up, violent crime is up 42% in Biden's term across the country. I mean, we can't do anything. We spend money that we don't have to give it to Ukraine, to give it to both Hamas and Israel in that war. We just sent $60 billion or whatever it is, or authorized at least, to send to Haiti, okay? When are we going to help the American public? When are we going to help the Chicago's, the St. Louis's, the Baltimore's, the Philadelphia's? When are we going to do something about domestic problems as opposed to foreign problems? Because I sure as hell don't see... Ukraine or Israel or the Palestinians or the Haitians sending money here ever to help when we have an issue, okay? I was talking on the live stream yesterday about <clears throat> an issue that happened in Minneapolis, okay? And I'll, for those of you that didn't see it, I'll explain it real quick. We all know that, you know, Barack Obama opened up the doors to Somalia and said, hey, bring us all your refugees. And they resettled them in Minneapolis because, you know, the Somali climate is so similar to that of Minnesota. You know, it's a good place to put them. No, it was a way to tie, tie a state forever to vote blue. You know, of course, this great pro uh, idea here brought us Ilhan Omar. That was a real success, you know, an America-hating uh, Congresswoman, you know, another one. <clears throat> but so there was a story that USA Today broke, I think it was on Monday, where back during COVID, you had all those food banks open, government food, because people couldn't go to work, they didn't have any money, so the government was paying places to feed people, you know, literally soup kitchens. Okay. And so this group of Somalis put together a soup kitchen in Minneapolis and billed the government for extraordinary amounts of meals that they claimed they were producing. And Uncle Sam sent them $250 million. Imagine how much food that is, $250 million. They didn't buy squat. They were sending suitcases of money back to Somalia. 80% of the stolen money was never recovered. So all those COVID funds, all that tax dollars, that taxpayer money went to Somalia, you know, because those people came to the United States to escape the atrocities in Somalia and then sent all the money back, okay? That would be a good way to look at financial terrorism within the United States. They don't have any loyalty to the the country that saved them, no, they want to make sure that the country that screwed them uh, is okay. You know, so they can steal our money and give it to them. Well, these guys got caught. And so they are now on trial. And they are so remorseful for what they did that one of the jurors, juror number 52, her father was at home one day and a guy knocks on the door with a grocery bag full of money to the tune of $120,000 and tries to give it to the dad and says, here, this is for her to make sure she acquits. And once she does, there's more coming. Now, of course, the juror and the father called the cops. She's, you know, not, she did the right thing. Okay. They removed her from the jury, everything like that. But this is what we've got in the United States right now. We've let in Every sort of criminal element, we have a criminal element running the country right now. Who's going to save the country? How's the country going to be saved? I mean, 
what do we wind up having? Is it complete anarchy and just crime everywhere? I mean, we're close to that right now with crime everywhere. I mean, you can't open up a news site any day without seeing the latest illegal shot a cop, illegal raped a woman, illegal beat up. What was the one we saw yesterday? Illegal beat up a couple and the woman suffered a miscarriage. You know, doesn't matter. And not saying only illegals commit crimes. There's plenty of dirt bags in the U.S. too. Most of them are Democrats. Okay, again, I will state the fact that the FBI has said 91% of all mass shootings in the United States in the 21st century have been committed by, by Democrats. Okay, again, fact. How are we going to save this country? Who is going to do it? Well, when we finally collapse, whether it be financial, whether it be war, whatever it be, the only people who are going to be left to rebuild are preppers, are people who had the foresight that something was wrong in this country. Honestly, at this point, I, it, it makes no sense to me how anybody in the country is not preparing. I mean, not a single person, because you have to be completely blind to think that things are going okay. The government's not the one that's going to help anybody. The government's the one that's causing the problems. I mean, people need to understand that. And all the time where I say, we need to get Trump in, into the White House, not so he can run the government, so he can clean it out. I mean, that's literally what needs to be done. We need a complete overhaul. The U.S. government is the largest employer in the United States, by far. Most of the people don't do anything except collect a check. And every time the government claims about jobs created, you know, Biden's bullshit claim that he says, oh, 15 million jobs. No, he didn't. Okay. The few jobs that actually have been created under created, okay, that didn't exist on January 20th, 2021, the few jobs that have been created are government jobs. Go back to the Soviet Union. Everybody worked for the government. You worked in the grocery store, the grocery store was owned by the government. You got a check from the government. That's where we're headed under this kind of rule right now. Everything is going to be controlled by the government until it isn't and then what if you're a government employee if your company survives on government contracts what happens when the government can't pay the bills what happens when all these military age males coming across the border decide to take over a neighborhood a city a state don't think it can't be done. It's already happened in Minneapolis. I just told you that story. Okay. We're falling apart from the inside. We're destroying ourselves. Not you and me, but the United States. By continuing on and going, ah, eh, it'll get fixed. It'll get fixed. By whom and how? Trump, the only thing Trump can possibly do to fix this is start getting rid of people from politics. California's got a bill on, on the docket right now that mandates that the state government hire illegals over Americans. Think about that. People that don't pay taxes, don't have a social security card, nothing. They are going to take a job from the taxpaying American. Really? Okay. And pray tell, how are you going to pay them? Oh, you're going to take money from the taxpaying American and the government is going to give it to the illegals. Does anybody else have a problem with this? Because I sure do. Preppers are the only one that's going to survive. 
when this crap finally hits the fan, when the cartels, when the gangs, when everybody start taking over cities, start taking over government, start taking over Minneapolis, and keep stealing from the people. I mean, on the Minneapolis story, you have people out there saying, oh, you can't prosecute these guys. Stealing money from the government is part of Somali culture, so if you're not letting them do it, that's racist. I kid you not. That's actually what's being talked about by liberal college professors okay, that are dealing with this uh, trial. You and I, and the many like us, not enough, are going to be the ones that have to save this country because we're going to be the only ones left. When the water shuts off, when the power shuts off, when the grocery stores lock the doors, you're going to see a panic that nobody can even fathom. This is why it's so important to have your food, your water, your power, your weapons, because that panic is going to be, I need to get it and get it from anywhere I can. Steve Poplar and I did a show a week ago. I think he posted it on Saturday morning. If you haven't watched it, it was actually a pretty fun conversation. But he made a good point. He goes, in an SHTF event, he goes, a day's wages will be the equivalent of two days worth of food. Right? Okay. That's in an SHTF situation. I want you to do something real quick. Take a look at your last grocery bill. Figure out what you make in one day after taxes. We're close now. And for a lot of people, we're already there. Is a day's wages are worth two days of food. We are already in an SHTF event. It ain't coming. It's here. Just most people don't see it. You know what your budget looks like. You know the cost of food, the cost of gasoline, the cost of insurance, the cost of housing, the cost of cars. You know it's all gone up. You see the crime in the cities left and right. You know exactly where we're headed. There are holes in this country where it's still relatively safe to go. Thank God I'm sitting in one of them. Okay. There are a lot of places in this country you don't want to go anywhere near. And I'm not saying the south side of Chicago at night. I'm talking any time of the day. You know, we're getting to the point where there's parts of the United States that are starting to look like London, you know, where the cops won't go ever, okay, because it's just being overtaken. We've been invaded with the assistance of our own government paying for the invaders. Whose side are they actually on? You got, you got to remember what the plan is. They don't want to do anything. They're going to bring everybody in. They are praying for a civil war while we all go out and kill each other. And they just sit back, drinking their mint julep, and watching the whole thing like it's the Kentucky Derby. And then they figure they're going to be out picking up the pieces afterwards. Go, okay, we got rid of all those conservatives you know now all the illegals are gone they all killed each other now we can now we can go about life again it's one of these things i hate to tell all these overlords when the shit gets violent <clears throat> you're the first ones we're coming after because you're the ones that caused this we need to save this country, but it's going to be done by you and me. It's not going to be done by Donald Trump. He's one man. It's going to be done by the probably hundred million of us that are going to vote for him in November. We are the ones that are going to make the decisions. We are going to take this country back. 
we are going to squash communism like a like an ant. We are the ones that are going to eliminate liberalism, progressivism, socialism from the face of the earth in this country. Let them if if they love socialism so much, let them go move to Canada under Justin Trudeau, Justin Castro. Let him go move to Mexico, who just elected a avowed communist as their new president. I hate to tell you this. They ain't welcome here. They will get no sympathy from us. And when all these communist, globalist, socialist, libtards start starving, good riddance. You weren't worth a shit to us in good times. You certainly ain't worth anything to us in bad. Pinball out.